Hi, I'm Noah Litvin for AE Tuts Plus, and today we'll be putting together the Drosta effect. It's sometimes also called the Escher effect or the infinite zoom effect. There are different ways you could get this effect naturally, but by doing this in post production, we'll be able to zoom into each clip, creating this cool seamless transition. And you can also get more creative in how you composite your clips. Maybe you want to put your footage inside of a picture frame or a photograph instead of a TV screen. I'll be using Adobe After Effects CS5, although older versions should work just fine. Let's get started. For the first step, you should drop all of your footage into a composition. You'll want to order the layers bottom to top in the order you'd like to move through the clips. So we'll start watching the bottom clip and move through the screen into the clip above that one, and then to the clip above that one, and so on. If you're putting this together for a music video, it would be good to sync up your footage to your music now. But if you don't have it set perfectly, don't worry. Once we've put this together, you'll be able to slide your footage around and adjust where the transitions happen. So let's start by pre-composing these top three layers. Select them all, then go to the Layer menu and choose Pre-Compose, or just press Ctrl-Shift-C. Now within this pre-comp, we're going to do it again for the top two layers. And then finally again for this last one. Great. Next we're going to composite each of these pre-comps into the clips below them. This step could vary widely based on the footage you're using, so you'll probably need to experiment with different tools and plugins. Now since I'm compositing a 16x9 clip onto a 4x3 screen, I'm going to start by letterboxing the clip. Let's go into the first pre-comp. Go to the Composition menu and click Composition Settings, or just press Ctrl-K. Let's switch the height up to 1440 pixels, so now the composition's dimensions are in a 4 to 3 ratio, rather than 16 to 9. But you'll see if we go into this first composition and scale the precomp down, even though we made it the right size, the extra pixels on the top and bottom are transparent. So let's go back into the pre-comp and add a black solid behind the footage. So go up to Layer, New, Solid, or just press Ctrl Y. Let's make sure it's set to black. And then we'll drag it down under the footage. Looks good. Now let's go through each of the other pre-comps and adjust their size and drop in the black solid, so we'll be good to go for the later transitions. So let's go back to the original composition and scale our first pre-comp back up to 100%. Let's set some keyframes where we want the transition to finish. We'll zoom in on the timeline quite a bit since we'll want the whole transition to occur in about half of a second. Let's break out the position to separate X and Y values and then set keyframes for both of them, as well as the scale, rotation, and opacity. So now let's move about half a second earlier and start compositing. I'm going to start by scaling down the pre-comp. I want to leave it a little bit too large because eventually we're going to add a mask and feather the edges. Let's rotate the clip just about one degree counterclockwise, maybe scale it down a little bit more. We can drop the opacity down to about 70%. This is looking pretty good, so to fine tune, let's zoom in and make sure our preview is rendering at full resolution. Let's zoom out and see how it looks. Pretty good. Let's zoom back in and add a mask. Make sure the pre-comp is selected, then choose the pen tool, and now trace out a mask matching the edges of the screen. Of 
If you click and drag when you place the points for your mask, you can easily smooth out your edges on the fly. Now click the original point to close the mask. It looks like some of these points aren't quite right, so we can just use the selection tool to adjust them. That's better. Now let's feather the mask. Go to the mask's property and bring mask feather up to 50 pixels. All right, I want to tweak the mask just a little bit more. This is looking pretty good, but I still think the footage is a bit bright. Instead of darkening the footage though, let's drop the CC composite plugin onto the precomp and we'll set it to multiply. Now it looks a little bit too dark, so let's dial the opacity on the plugin back to about 50%. Since we won't want this plugin applied to the precomp at all once the transition is complete, let's set a keyframe for the opacity here at 50%. Then once the transition is complete over this frame, we'll set a keyframe at 0%, so the plugin is no longer affecting the footage. We'll need to do something similar for the mask. You'll see if we turn off the clip under the precomp, when the transition is complete, the mask is still applied. To fix this, let's go back to the first set of keyframes and set one on the mask expansion property to zero pixels. Then we'll move over to our second set of keyframes and increase the mask expansion property until these black bars disappear. This is looking good at about 200 pixels. Again, you'll probably need to experiment with different effects depending on your footage. You may want to play with a mesh warp or maybe set your precomp as a 3D layer. Whatever you do, just remember to add a second keyframe to leave your clip unaffected after the transition. Okay, so let's see what we've got. So we're pretty close, but it looks like the footage is jumping off of the screen. To fix this, let's move back to our first keyframe and we'll pick whip the bottom layer of footage to the precomp. So click and drag the little spiral on the bottom layer up to the precomp's name. Now that clip will follow the motion of the precomp and it'll look as if we're zooming into the screen. Take a look. All right, so let's make this transition just a little bit faster. We'll do this by grabbing all of the second keyframes and sliding them over to the left just a little bit. Now we can also smooth out the motion here by selecting all of the keyframes, going to Keyframe Assistant, and then clicking Easy Ease, or you can just press F9. Since all of these shots were done without moving the tripod, I'll be able to copy and paste each of the keyframes over for all of the subsequent transitions. Let's move a bit further down the timeline, switch into the first precomp, and then paste the keyframes onto the second precomp. Now let's copy and paste over the mask in the CC composite effect as well. Make sure that the keyframes for the mask and any other effects are lining up appropriately with the keyframes for the transition.
We're looking pretty good, but the footage is offset along the y-axis because our nested composition is taller than the original composition. It's no problem, we can just slide it down at this keyframe. And then at the second keyframe, we can bring it down to 720. Remember to go to your first keyframe and then pick whip your bottom layer to your precomp. Okay, let's see how this one looks. Pretty good. So now we'll copy and paste these corrected keyframes over for the last transition. And this one looks good as well. So now if you decide afterwards you'd like to change the speed of the transition or where it happens, you just slide around your columns of keyframes. And if you'd like to time your footage differently, you'll probably want to slide your clips around and not the precomps to ensure that you're only adjusting that one clip and not every subsequent one. Also, if you string together a bunch of these layers, your render time could get pretty huge. To cut down on this, trim back your footage and precomps so they're only being rendered when they're visible, like so. Also, remember to make all of your compositions and clips motion blur enabled. Check off each of these boxes in each of your compositions. Adding a motion blur makes the effect look more realistic and it'll mask any artifacts that crop up when you scale up the footage during the transition. And if you'd like to preview the motion blur, click this button to the top left of the timeline. Great, so there's the Drosta effect in Adobe After Effects CS5. This is Noah Litvin for AE Tuts Plus. Thanks for watching.